today we're gonna to talk about numerical solutions. So far we've, we've spent all of our time um, coming up with either analytical solutions or like algebraic solutions, we'll call it. So analytical solution would be, you have a, a domain, you want to model the temperature gradient in that domain in some direction. And so you have, you draw a control volume, you do your control volume analysis. That control volume is differentially small, right? We're taking the limit as or dx or dr is that uh, differential element goes to zero. We're taking that limit. And we develop a model under that assumption that we can uh, have a control volume in that differential limit and have an analytical expression that comes out of that. Um, if you found that annoying, like solving ODEs, you don't really like that, then numerical solutions are the way to go. Um, numerical solutions are really just a bunch of um, algebraic equations put together to approximate an ODE. Okay, and, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, may, maybe instead of modeling the entire domain with one equation, we can model little bits of the domain accurately with a really simple equation and then add all those things together. Okay, so that's a, that's a numerical solution. Uh, in terms of the, the advantages or disadvantages, I mean, um, advantages of analytical. So if you can get an analytical model that represents your situation, it's very fast. You have one equation, you just evaluate that one equation and you're done. So they're, they tend to be computationally fast, but they're in a, uh, inflexible, meaning I have to make a bunch of assumptions in order to get that equation to begin with. So if I have anything like, I wanna say in, anything interesting, but if I have anything atypical or anything, um, you know, sort of complex going on in terms of the material properties or uh, anything, uh, you know, nonlinear in the problem that's happening, you really can't come up with an analytical solution for that. There, there is no uh, way to get to that using ODEs and, and that analysis. So they're inflexible in that way. On the other hand, you can have a numerical model. Um, the, the advantage there is you can really do anything you want. So like, let's say I've got conductivity as a function of temperature, but the only thing I have available to me is a lookup table for that. You can't put a lookup table in a, in a function or, or in an analytical expression, but you can definitely put it in a numerical solution. So you can do a, a lot of things with numerical models that you can't do with analytical. The downside to numerical, they're approximate. They're always approximate, right? You're always solving an approximate set of equations um, as opposed to an exact representation. And they tend to be computationally intensive. So in order to get good accuracy, you have to discretize your domain into a bunch of really small nodes. And then you have to compute the equations at each of those nodes. And so it becomes a burden computationally. Um, is that usually a problem? Well, I guess it depends on, on what you're trying to do and how many nodes uh, it requires to get good accuracy. Um, but those are kind of the trade-offs you have to keep in mind. Let's see, oops, right here. Okay, um, so first let's talk through the steps that are required to solve uh, or generate a numerical model and solve it. And then the rest, I mean, we have like one slide of here's how you do it. And then the rest of today is gonna be, let's go through an example and, and actually do one. Okay, so the steps um, just kind of outlining here. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your domain, whatever. So you could just, you know, in our, in our mind, let's imagine a domain that we're trying to model in some direction. And we're gonna uh, discretize that domain, meaning we're gonna break that domain up into a bunch of little control volumes, right? These are not, differentially small anymore, they actually have a, a finite uh, width or, or length, uh, but we can break up our domain into that, that number of nodes. We call that N nodes. Um, second thing is we then carry out an energy balance on each control volume that's placed around the node. I'm gonna kind of show what this means. It's the same, it's the same idea as the analytical model. We're just uh, doing this now on a finite, um, like a, a finite sized element. Okay, and then you have to uh, keep in mind, there's a different process for the nodes that are inside the domain versus those that are right on the boundary. Okay. And that's actually how you end up enforcing boundary conditions is through those differences. Okay, step three is then we approximate each energy term with a rate equation. So we have our control volume, we have energy uh, terms that go in, into that control volume or um, the energy balance. And we end up with these terms that we need rate equations for. Okay, and the difference here for numerical models is instead of calling this q dot r, q dot r plus dr, whatever, we're actually writing rate equations usually in terms of like a resistance model. Okay, so you have an algebraic equation, it's just one temperature minus another, 
divided by some resistance that has to do with the size of that node and what, what's happening in that node. Okay, so if you do all this correctly, uh, step one through three will end up with a set of uh, N algebraic equations in N unknown temperatures. But this is ultimately the goal. The goal is to get to a set of equations um, and unknowns that you can solve simultaneously. Um, as you can guess, ease is usually useful for that, but it's not always the best tool. And so we're gonna talk about, here's how you do it in ease, uh, setting up these systems of equations and solving them. Um, but here's also how you do it in more, I'd say appropriate tools for numerical solutions. Okay, MATLAB in particular. Um, so it'd be really nice. Okay, we go through step one, two, three, we do it, we come up with a solution. It'd be nice to, to say we're done, but really we're not. Okay, there's more to do after this. Uh, what do I mean? Well, you got to somehow verify that the way you set up the model uh, doesn't depend, on, the, the answer you're getting doesn't depend on the number of nodes that you've chosen, right? Or some other assumption that's gone into the model. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so I could discretize my domain, for example, into five nodes or three nodes, come up with a set of equations, solve that, get an answer. And if I didn't, you know, question whether that assumption of three nodes is valid, I could happily go on and just be completely wrong. Um, what I want, what you want to do is actually go back and say, pick something that's important to you, right? Some important thing. <laughs> uh, that important thing could be like the hay bale problem. We want to, we're looking at the temperature of the middle of the hay bale. Uh, maybe you care about the, the heat flux into a particular surface or something like that, right? Pick that important thing that you're trying to be accurate about and then do uh, sensitivity on the number of nodes, meaning solve the model a bunch of times for a bunch of different nodes until you get to a point where that thing stops changing, right? Eventually it, it trails off and changing the number of nodes no longer uh, is, is important. Um, and it, okay, so like why is, you know, this plot is really um, kind of qualitative and that's, I think, intentional. Again, you have to use your judgment. So let's say, for example, you, you're modeling something where you have to be very, very precise. You have to, you have to know exactly what's, what's happening within some you know, really tight tolerance. So maybe, maybe you're gonna pick a number of nodes way up here, right? where you're kind of way up on the, on the end of um, number of nodes compared to the important thing you're trying to do. If you're just trying to get a rough estimate for something, maybe you can go down further. Right? So you, this, this is again where you have to use your judgment as, as engineers and say, this is good enough. This is good enough to answer the question uh, within the bands of uncertainty that I can tolerate. Okay, um, so that's a, a, a key part of this whole process, right? You have to do that. You have to finally solve the problem, right? The last thing you wanna do is do things that are gonna help you make sure that the problem you're solving actually makes sense. And, and again, these are kind of like ambiguous concepts, but verify that your solution makes sense. So if you're modeling something and you see that the temperature from node to node is oscillating significantly, and intuitively there's nothing in the problem that would make it do that. That's a good indication that there's some instability in your model and your model's giving you garbage, right? You're just like common sense things that you look at. Don't, don't just take it as this is the answer, right? Um, and then the last thing um, which you might say, well, then what's the point is compare numerical solution to analytical solution. So you go through, you derive a numerical model, you get to the end, and now you're going to derive an analytical model too. Uh, so why am I saying that? Well, it's often the case that you can uh, make some you know, key assumption about your problem and make it solvable in the analytical uh, approach. So for example, let's say I, I had a lookup table of conductivity as a function of temperature, and that's how that's the thing that's making me want to um, solve this numerically as opposed to analytically. Great, so go, go ahead, make your model, uh, but then in order to compare it, swap out the part where you're calling that function for conductivity and just set it to a constant. And does your model then predict the same thing that an analytical model with a constant conductivity would predict? If you do that, then you can be really confident that 99% you know, of your model is okay, and then the one part, the crucial part that you're actually trying to accommodate that conductivity as a function of temperature, that that's, can, that's fitting in and doing what it's supposed to do, right? So it's, it's a, um, a really important, it's really easy to skip that step, but it's a really important thing to do to give yourself that extra sort of level of confidence that what you're getting out of a numerical model makes sense, okay? Um, usually, you know, 
usually when you're solving an analytical problem, you get to the analytical solution. If you've gotten a solution, it's usually pretty, you know, pretty confident that you got there because in order to get the solution, um, you kind of have to do things right along the way. Numerical model is really easy to get garbage out of. Okay, so these are all steps that you can do that help mitigate some of that risk of getting um, bad, bad results.